Hello, I'm going to talk with you about the most important changes and the essentials of the new guidelines for basic life support and automated external defibrillators for the 2010 ERC guidelines. I am Ruud Koster, I'm the chair of the working group of basic life support and AED of the European Resuscitation Council. I want to bring six issues to your attention. First, in the guidelines, we recognize and emphasize more than ever the importance of chest compressions during cardiac arrest. Um, we want you to do high quality basic life support. And what is high quality basic life support? It primarily comes down to high quality chest compressions. And for us, and that's new in the guidelines, we want you to compress the chest at least 5 centimeters depth. It used to be 4 to 5 centimeters. We have seen the importance of the chest compression depth and want to emphasize that the depth is increased to at least 5 centimeters. We also say that it should not be more than 6, but we aim at 5 centimeters as a minimum adequate chest compression for all adults receiving basic life support. Also, we want the rate of chest compressions to be at least 100 per minute. Be aware that a rate of 100 doesn't necessarily always mean you deliver 100 chest compressions in a minute. That depends on the interruptions, but I will address that issue in a moment. We want you to compress at 100 compressions per minute, but not exceed 120. Third, we want the interruptions to be minimized. I will come back to breathing in a moment, but other reasons for interruptions should be avoided as much as possible. And I can think of at least two. One is that we again confirm that after a defibrillation shock, we do not uh, check for a pulse and we do not analyze the heart rhythm. But immediately after having given a shock, go back to chest compressions. Second, we want you to continue chest compressions as much as possible when an AED is being applied. It is absolutely possible, it can be educated, that while pads are being applied to the chest, a second rescuer, if available, can continue chest compressions up to the very moment that the AED requires you to step back for analysis we decided after long deliberations to continue supporting breathing in the basic life support. There are a lot of good reasons for that, among others that breathing will remain essential on, under all circumstances when it is being used for children or for people who suffocate or drown or have any other type of respiratory cause of the cardiac arrest. But even when it is a primary cardiac arrest with an arrhythmia as the cause of the, of the collapse, we still maintain that good CPR should include both chest compressions and breathing, but the breathing should be minimally interrupting CPR and a lot of focus should be given in education that the two breaths are to be delivered within five seconds. The ratio between chest compressions and ventilations remains 30 to 2. Of course, if you are for some reason not will be willing or able to give rescue breathing, then we are convinced that giving at least chest compressions is better than doing nothing. An important thing for the rescuers also is that they understand how to recognize a cardiac arrest. We have in the past always said that a patient requires CPR if he's unresponsive and not breathing normally. That remains in effect, but we want to stress and emphasize now that not breathing normal includes both not breathing and breathing abnormal. And the most important problem that we recognized is that gasping, gasping is a very peculiar abnormal way of breathing that is an indication and a sign of cardiac arrest, indication for starting CPR. 
we know from many experiences that gossiping can confuse both the rescuer and the dispatcher when it is described, and they may wrongly conclude that the patient is breathing and therefore does not require CPR, while in fact it's the opposite. Because he is gasping, he does require CPR. And the important challenge for now is in education to teach people to recognize gasping as the important thing to indicate towards CPR instead of away from CPR. A fourth issue, which is more important for advanced life support and professionals, but still for lay rescuers also, we have considered to deliver a period of CPR before a defibrillatory shock is to be given. We have come back from that. We decide now that if a defibrillator, either manual defibrillator or AED is available, we should immediately connect the defibrillator, allow it to analyze the heart rhythm and give a shock, and then go to CPR. As I said before, when the AED is being connected, we should continue CPR as much as possible, but we should not deliberately leave a few minutes of CPR to go on before we even attempt to defibrillate. An issue that's new in our guidelines is that we emphasize the importance of feedback. There are two types of feedback. Feedback during CPR with devices that can tell you if you compress at the appropriate rate and at the appropriate depth. Although there may be some caveats in its use because it may underestimate compression depth, we have high hopes that these devices, when appropriately used and developed, will help making chest compressions optimal in terms of depth and rate. As a last issue, we have seen now so much and overwhelming evidence of the importance for survival of applications of AEDs that we more and more emphasize the use of AEDs in cardiac arrest treatment. And this applies not only to AEDs in the public domain, sports arenas, offices, etc., but also in particularly also in the residential domain of the patients, where, as we know, about 60 to 70 percent of cardiac arrests occur. This is clearly the underdeveloped part of AED application, and we emphasize and encourage uh, the community to continue introducing AEDs in the residential areas also. Of course, these are only the essentials of the new guidelines, and of course I invite you very much to continue looking into the, uh, into the screen and to the text of the full guidelines in order to come to complete understanding of all the details. Thank you very much.